Hello everybody, welcome to part seven. Let's get straight in there, grab a handful, get on with it, and I'll tell you what you have to do after the first handful. Right, let's go. Okay, uh, it's like an old one to start with. 1892, already got an 1892, and I think it's in slightly better condition than that one. Right, 1932. That's not bad for 32. That might be an upgrade, yeah. Could be. We'll look in a minute. There's Edward the Seventh, 1908. That's a shiny one. Is that a 66? No, it's a 65. But we do have a very nice 65 on the board already. 1938, George the Sixth, and there is a farthing. That's nice. George the Fifth, 1926. Not in bad condition for 1926. Victoria, 1882, and you can see it's got an H mint mark on there. The rare one is without the H mint mark. I do think I think we've got a slightly better one than that in the book, but I don't think we've got one on the board yet. Okay, we have 1964. Uh, there is a Edward the Seventh. That's another 1908, another 1965, nice condition, there's Victoria, 1888, so that will be a Jack the Ripper coin, the 1888 British coins, Jack the Ripper coins, because that's when he was at large, Victorian London in, in the 1880s, I haven't got an 1888 yet, oh there's another halfpenny. 1931. Not too bad. Okay, George VI, 1946. We just look for that little dash up there after the E in one. No, that's just the common one. What we got here, 1935. 21. Oh, 1931. That's not bad for 31. Could be another upgrade. Have a look at that. Right, 1912. There's a 1912 with an H mint mark. Right, we do have a better condition one than that, I think. Okay, there's a 1902. And you can see there the tide level is high. The tide is high, as Blondie once said. Um... 1929, 1896, again, terrible condition for an 1896, very worn, no rim on that one at all. Uh, last one in this handful is a George VI, 1948. Right, let's have a look at the current situation of the Whitman albums. We've got all the Edward the Seventh there, just need a George V obverse, I'll sort that out in this video. Uh, haven't got the elusive 1919 KN. Up to the next one, George V, George VI. We just need 1950 and 51, as you'd expect, for George VI. Um, need another 1953. Found two in the last hunt. That was amazing, but still need another one for that odd verse. I'll put one on the board. Uh, 1967, where there are no 1967s in these batches of coins. So I won't be finding that. And going back 1860 to 1880, there's still quite a lot needed for that. All the earlier Victoria ones, what a few gaps there. And this one here, 1881 to 1901. That one back. Still needed an 83, 88, 89, and a Victorian obverse. So I look for a decent one of those. Okay, for the book this time, we've got an 1888. 5.1 million and this 1931 that's a little bit of an upgrade there it's a bit dirty the other one that's better and for the giveaway board we've got the 1882 with the h mint mark we've got this 1932 which is definitely better than that one so i'll upgrade that uh we've got the halfpenny from 1931 that can go down there and another farthing, this time 1926. Okay, let's grab some more. Here 
And here we go. Now, Ian Ritchie said, where's Sue? He hasn't heard her voice in videos lately. Well, all she does now, Ian, is watch Northeast Coin videos all day. That's all she does. Sue, what are you doing? Watching Dave. Watching Dave. Let's check this out. Yeah, that's his latest video. How many times you watch this? About 50. 50? Yeah. I wondered where he's getting his views from. <laughs> All right, we'll just leave her to it and get searching through these. Right there. That's a nice looking Edward VII. Uh, 1906. Well, that's definitely going to be an upgrade. A little bit dark up there, but I don't think that's dirt. That's definitely, definitely an upgrade. Oh, yeah, definitely an upgrade. Well, that one's definitely not whatever it is. 19, another 1912. Very, very worn. The 1912s with the H mint mark always seems better condition. I don't know why that would be. Uh, there's a Elizabeth, a 1963. George V, 1930. What's that? 1914. Another George V. George VI, 1913 George V. I think that's going to be an upgrade. Yeah, not a bad condition at all for 1913. They're usually very worn. Definitely an upgrade that one. Uh, there's a 1921. 1928. Oh, George V. 1917. There's a 1909. Edward VII. For the 1909, you're looking for a little dot after the N. Not got it on that one. They're becoming really collectible. Let me go and get one of mine. I'll show you. There we go. The one I just found is there on the bottom. And the one with a little dot after the N. You see that up there? I'll get a bit closer. There we are. It's like a little full stop. Now this one, about 10 years ago, Probably £10 you could have got one for, but now becoming really collectible. If you can find one with the dot, around about £50, probably even more in this condition. Definitely worth looking out for. But that one was just a common one. Okay, there's Victoria. 1901. George VI, 1938. There's an old one, and that is not a British one. That looks like it could be Jersey, and it is 1933. One twelfth of a shilling, 1933. That's quite an old one. We don't usually find them that old. That's nice. Oh, I've dropped it, smashed it to bits. Oh, there it is. So that's going to be part of the giveaway. Victoria, 1897. Looking for a dot, full stop in between the O and the N. If you watch the last video, part six, you'll. See, I nearly thought I'd found one then, but I don't think it was. 1936. There's another 1909. Have we got a dot on this one? No. Not in the right place. Nope. Okay, there's a dirty 64. Is that dirty enough for the dirty mug? Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah, definitely. In it goes. There we go. Right, we have got a 1926. Now, is that the modified effigy? Again, if you've been watching these videos, you'll know what I mean by that. And that's just a common one. Now, we've got a 19... Is that 1922? For the 1922, you need to look at the trident. If the middle prong of that trident is not touching one of the beads or one of the teeth around the edge, and it's going to be a very valuable coin, but as you can see, that one's touching. Okay, we've got 1948, last one in this handful. Oh, 1887. I don't think we've got an 1887. Let me just check my book. Yeah, I have got an 1887 in there already. And 1906 is definitely an upgrade. So we'll get that one out. And I'll put that one in there. And the 1913, that is a massive upgrade, much better. Nice. And for the board, 1887, 
And this one twelfth of a shilling from Jersey can go over there. Now, if you want to win everything down here, all you've got to do is comment on these videos. This is number seven. Uh, there'll probably be one more after this, I should think. Then what I'll do, I'll pick a video at random, and then from that video, I'll pick a comment at random, and the person that made that comment will get everything down here. So let's get on with it. Right. Start in this handful with a 1945. Sometimes you can find a double struck nine. Very, very difficult to see that unless it's really, really clean. So if I do find one, I'll let you know. Uh, 1961. Uh, 1962. And that is 1903. At last, we've got a 1903. Not particularly that scarce. Video number seven, before I found one. Now there, you're looking for what is known as an open three, but you can see that three curls at the top, curls around at the bottom as well. So that's the common closed three. But we do need a 1903. Uh, 1914. There's a 1905, Edward the Seventh. 1966. Oh, an Irish one. 1942 Helen Chicks there. I think it's the 1942 where sometimes you can find one where the bottom half of one of the chicks is missing. But they all look in one piece to me. Yeah, 1942 Irish one penny. Right. Camera freaking out there. Right, we've got a George V 1912 and that's got an H mint mark on it. H4 Heaton. Heaton works in Birmingham. I do find more 1912s with the H mint mark than without, and they do tend to be in better condition as well. So let me just show you. This is my tub of 1912s, so there's no mint mark on these, and they do seem quite worn, a lot of them. It's that many, and for the 1912 with the H mint mark, that lot there, about 20% more I would say. And they all tend to be in better condition as well. Can anybody explain that one? Probably to do with the alloy they're made from. A slightly different mixture in Heaton. There's an 1896. I'll tell you what, that's the best 1896 I've found for a long time. So that's going to be an upgrade. George, no, Edward VII, 1905. Always a halfpenny. George VI, 1942. Uh, another George V, 1922. Are we going to find a rare one? No, middle prong touching the bead. Uh, there's a Victoria, 1899. Uh, we've got here 1938 George VI, and there's a battered 1919. And there's no mint mark on that one. There's an Elizabeth, 1962. Is that dirty enough for the dirty mug? Yeah, I think it is. In you go. Oh, it didn't bounce that one. Edward VII, 1910. And there's 1966. Another Edward VII, 1904. 1910, so that's another Edward VII. There's 1929. King George V. Uh, another 1929. And last one in this handful is a 1914. And you know where that's going. I didn't bounce either. This uh, 1899 Victoria, I'm going to use that for the obverse, so it's not too bad. The 1896, that is a little bit better. Go there. I'm losing track. I did find a 1903 in an earlier hunt, so that one can go on the board. The 1903 can go there. And that is another full bingo line there, Smithy. Uh, what we've got here, Irish one there. And a 1942 Hapney. Okay, one more handful for this video, and then I'll finish it off in part eight. Dig deep. 
and let's see what we've got here. Right, we have a 19, is that 13? 1913. Uh, we've got a 1911. Looking for the Gobi X, the hollow neck at the back. Uh, that is not, that is a common 1911, sadly. 1964. That's not bad, is it? I'll check that, see if it's better than the one on the board. There's another 1899 Victoria. On the Victoria, 1898. Yeah, we've got better ones than that. 1902, and is that a high tide? Yep, yeah, that's a common high tide. High tide level, high sea level on that one. And what's that? Oh, there's a farthing. Still got a bit of shine on it, that one, for George VI. 1948. That's not bad, is it? Really good nick for 48. There, the Victoria. 1878. Yep, 1878. We still need one of those for the board. I think I've got one in the book. Right, 1939. 1928. There's a George V, and that looks like a recessed ear. So, my bet is this is going to be a 1916. Yeah, not a bad one either. See how the ears recessed into the coin there? I don't know if you can see it though. Hard to see on camera. And that will mean one of those teeth up there is broken. Yeah, look, clearly see that. Follow that colon up after the word Brit. And that bead or that tooth is broken in half. That's not too bad, that one, is it? That's quite good. Right, another 1916. Another broken tooth? No. Oh, I might be able to... Well done with it. There it is. See the difference there? See how that ear is sunk into the coin where that one isn't? Quite, see it quite clearly there. All right. All right. Another George V, 1931. Shiny one, 66. But we do a better one than that. Oh, look at that. A George the Third halfpenny. Find a lot of George III. Can we read the date on it? 1806. Yeah. Yep. Date clearly readable. I do find quite a lot of these George III's in these hunts, but they're usually just discs. <laughs> just about make out the, the face sometimes. But that's nice. Very nice. You notice they're in a different orientation where most British coins, all British coins now, are that way around and have been for a long time. But this one is in the what is called the coin orientation, which is that way around. Same as uh, all the US coins. But that's a cracker. I like that one. 1895. Now, we're looking for a big gap in between the trident and the P. Yeah, that's called the one millimeter gap. The two millimeter gap is the scarcer one. That's a common one. Another Victoria. That's a younger head. So, let me read it. That's a five at the end, so it's got to be 1885, hasn't it? Yeah, 1885. Pretty worn, but just about readable. 1885, can't remember if I've got that one or not. Right, 1934, George V, and the last one in this video, a 1944. I'm going to put this George V with the recessed here in the obverse compartment. Now, they only supply one George V obverse or only one compartment for it but as you can see there are two clearly different heads from 1928 onwards it was much smaller and if you count the like the recessed ear and the modified effigy there was more than that but two clearly different ones but they only supply one obverse place so that recessed ear can go in there for the board um, this 1964 one on the board's very nice condition, even though it's not as shiny, but it depends what you prefer. I think I'll leave both of those down there. So the winner can get both of them. Uh, what else we got then? Um, 1878, yeah, there we go, 1878. We need that somewhere, there it is. And this 1885, not the 
best of conditions, but it'll do for now. Uh, what else have we got? A farthing down there. Nice shiny, what was it 1948? And this lovely George the Third, ain't So that's what we've got left in that box. I'll try and get through them in the next video. Today is, what is it, the 26th of May today, Friday the 26th of May. I always upload these videos on the day I record them. So you see these coins the same day as I do. Always do that. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.